One thing that I'm, I, I study technology and I study te technology cycles and I notice they always have this like dependable uh, pattern, re repeatable pattern of sort of how they roll out, maybe what we'd call the diffusion of innovation. And so, you know, you have this disruptive technology and then there's some, you know, people that are against that disruptive, maybe like the Luddites, um, we get over the chasm. And I'm just curious your take on, on, on how it's disrupting the medical space. I believe, I mean, you already have people using this, right? I mean, thousands of people are already using this. I could see where right. doctors would be like, oh, I can't use that AI. I've been doing this for so long. I'm curious, you know, since you already have, uh, I believe, thousands, go ahead and t correct me if I'm wrong uh, on that, but um, how has that been getting them to adopt this disruptive technology and how fast is this growing or you're growing with it? That's a really, really good question. So, so there, there, there are a couple different things that I'll unpack here. First of all, um, there's a lot of change management difficulty with physicians. Um, that, that a lot of that has improved since COVID. Um, you know, doctors were extremely initially very fearful of any digital technology that would review their data. The, the view from a physician's perspective was. I'm going to have some kind of big brother reviewing my work to identify areas where I made mistakes. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to people's health, that's a very touchy thing. It's, and, we, you know, unfortunately, you know, uh, uh, doctors receive a lot of uh, flack for that. Say, hey, you made a mistake. You caused a loved one of mine to, to be hurt or, 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 or what have you. So, so th there was this sort of extreme fear that um, – that 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 I don't want my data to be scanned. I don't want anything to do with this thing. I just want to be a doctor. I want to I want I want, I want to see patients and I want to go about my way. I think what happened with COVID um, is that because we went from um, you know you know uh, very low percentage of, of of telemedicine to very high percentage of telemedicine we, due to physical distancing requirements, suddenly physicians needed technology. If they weren't on telemedicine, if they weren't trusting digital systems, if they weren't digitally enabling themselves, they were suddenly not able to practice. So they had to get a lot more entrenched and engaged with digital technologies. And I think that sort of helped them understand these technologies a little better, bit better and, and it helped diffuse some of the fears. But I also think, you know, doctors like the rest of us are consumers of these technologies. So they're, they're using ChatGPT. They're using all these things. And they're starting to recognize that there's enormous productivity enhancements that come with this. And I think it's somewhat generational, too. Now we have way more millennial and Gen Z doctors, right? And so they operate very differently than, than, than Gen Xers. And so one of the reasons why I started well um, at the time is that I just – I was in, – in 2017, I was just sort of shocked – to see how little digitization and modernization there was in healthcare. And I thought, this is really strange. I mean, like most other industries have been entirely disrupted with this technology. Um, and, and, and my view was, well, look, it's going to happen. It just hasn't happened yet. No industry evades digitization and modernization. And so, and so the entire thrust of the business plan at Well Health Technologies was tech-enabled care delivery and supporting the healthcare practitioner with tools, understanding that they'll adopt those tools when they're ready, but also understanding that there was a generational shift. A lot of times when we look at that adoption curve, we have to recognize that, it's these, that these people also change over time. And, and there are certain generations um, that, are, that, are, that are probably going to be less receptive to these technologies in cer certain generations. And as we, as we move forward, we're, we're just going to have more adoption just by virtue of the fact that we're, we're consumers of these technologies. Yeah. I, thinking about it from like an investment lens, I was kind of thinking about this through this as a, from my VC lens. I've been doing you know, VC stuff. I have a, I'm a partner in a, in a VC uh, hedge fund, a Bitcoin VC hedge fund. Um, and I, you know, we're, we're looking for obviously areas that are disruptive. Um, and we're looking for sort of this convergence. And when I think about back to kind of like RFK, he's talking about like this explosion of health problems. Um, and then you have a revolutionary technology like AI that could then come in and help that. And so you sort of have this like massive growing industry that's sort of like recession proof because, I mean, when you're sick, you're sick. doesn't matter what the economy is doing. Um, so you have this massive growing industry, and then you have this disruptive technology coming in. Um, it seems pretty explosive. That's how I would think about it from a, from a VC level. So, I mean, how big do you think like this sector is, or maybe this convergence of healthcare and AI? 
I think it's incredibly big. I mean, if you think about it, um, healthcare is typically the largest um, component of our services economy, of our economy overall, in, in most industrialized nations. So if, um, in, in the United States, we're talking about, depending on how you size healthcare, it can be anywhere between 3 and $5 trillion a year. Typically with uh, pharmacy being worth about 15 to 20% of that, right? And so now let's think about 3 to $5 trillion in reference to the defense industry. We know that, for example, the United States spends you know, a significant amount of money on, on, on national defense. So national defense is about seven, eight, seven to eight hundred billion dollars a year. And so we're talking about healthcare being multiples of national defense. Yeah, crazy. <laughs> you know, that what most, when you kind of understand the context of just how big healthcare spending is, you start to recognize that even niches in healthcare are worth you know, multiple billions of dollars. You can you can you can go in, down rabbit holes in in the healthcare industry and find significant opportunities. You mentioned something earlier that I think um, I think is going to be a bigger deal, and 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 that is you know educating consumers and helping them um, with their behaviors to improve their health. So once once people start to understand that their behavior is a, a very big part of their healthcare. Um, and, and we, we, we need more and more tools to empower people to make better decisions. And I think that is a big, big business opportunity. Um, and, and I think it will involve your personal data. I think it will involve, um, you know, personal co-pilots that, that will help us run our, our lives better. Uh, I also think that, you know, we are going to see a significant rise in robotics. You know, um, you know, back to what you were saying earlier about you know the, disrupt, the dis- disruptive potential of, of robots and, and AI. I mean, it's there. It used to be that you know people would say, "Well, if you're a hairdresser or or or, or dentist, don't worry, you're all you're, you're always going to have a job. There's never going to be a robot that'll be able to do that." You know, sorry, not true. Um, you know, now there's likely going to be uh, and 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 robots being developed that can essentially do anything. There's already home cooking uh, robots available. There's already robots that you can acquire that'll do housework for you. Um, Tesla is working very hard on on solving those types of problems. But there's enormous VCs and startups, and there's going to be some some winners in that space that will create multi-trillion dollar companies. So I think it's an incredible space. I think it'll help a lot of people but i think again it'll be a tool that'll be used you know for good and bad so we have to wor- now worry about is my robot going to get hacked and come and kill me <laughs> i assure you that'll happen yeah. so that's a pretty scary yeah. thought right yeah. right so we have to start thinking about how do we protect ourselves you know again this is a tool we're going to acquire you know tremendous types of robots that are going to help us in all kinds of different aspects of our lives and then we're and and likely in five or ten years we're not even going to drive anymore. There's going to be a robot driving, and we're going to get in. And we may even you know just cars will be designed differently. They'll be de- designed with beds so that we'll be able to sleep if we're going you know uh, for 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 you know a longer commute or what have you. So really, I mean, um, we're at a, a very interesting inflection point. I think you know with with all this coming together and and and, and I when I say this, people say. Well, aren't we always at an inflection point and say, well, not mm-hmm. really. I mean, there are people, I heard Mark Andreessen talk about this in, in, in a speech of his, that had been working on this problem of generative AI for their whole lives. You know, so they, they went to school, they, they did their master's, their PhD, and then they worked for decades working on this problem, and they never saw it come to fruition. And, and, and they were scientists and researchers and extremely smart people that for decades and decades we're working on this and, and, and then suddenly it came together. So it's a very, it's, we live in a very, very interesting world um, and it's about to get a lot more intriguing. I mean, as, as ChatGPT, as OpenAI drops new releases, we're going to constantly be surprised and, and, and you know, uh, um, you know, exhilarated by this, but 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 also it's it's going to heighten our. We should be heightening our defenses against uh, some of these innovations as well, and, and and just trying to figure out how to make them safe. Mm-hmm.